Okay, so I gotta tell you about this article. It's on Medium, written by this guy named Thanos, and it's actually about how he thinks he used ChatGPT to win the lottery. So he talks about how one of his first experiences, he actually won $50, and then after that, mostly he got two of the five numbers right, and the other ones were really close. And he was wondering, is ChatGPT so smart that it's understanding patterns in the numbers that are like inaccessible to human knowledge? And even though I just think you got lucky and you're just sometimes close, I still found the article really fascinating because the way that it works with next token prediction in a latent space, what is a random number to chat GPT? Like it can't give you a random number. Like the same way it's really hard for the human brain to come up with a good password. We're too good at pattern prediction to actually be like random. And a little bit of research showed me that the number 7, 13, 1, 69 are all much more popular on just the written text of the entire internet. But even though those are the most frequent in the data that it was trained on, if you ask chat GPT for random numbers, that's not the frequency that you get. Based on this prompt, pick a random number between one and 100, just return the number, don't include any other text or punctuations. This is the chart that you get if you ask for 2,000 responses. Look at that weird distribution. ChatGPT loves the number 42 for some reason. Out of 100 numbers, that comes up 10% of the time. Then 47, 57, and 67, which is also kind of a weird pattern. Then a little cluster in the 70s, and oddly not one result under 15. If anything, I actually wonder if you said, can you give me random numbers to win the lottery, if it would realize what lottery number numbers look like and how they're more distributed normally and give you something that is truly more random. Like ChatGPT helps a lot, but I don't think it improves your odds of winning the lottery. Next, let's talk about this article written by Caitlin Tiffany. It's called AI Generated Junk is Flooding Etsy, and I'm not surprised. I made this video where I watched 100 of those YouTube videos that were like, use ChatGPT to get rich, and they pretty much were all like, make a coloring book and then put it on Etsy. And she talks about how all these young people who are like eager for a side hustle, they need some extra money, they come up with basically clip art, stickers, mugs, t-shirts, anything that you can just use mid-journey for graphic design on. And Joshua Mayo makes a point to say this is a temporary gold rush, and I think this article from Caitlin is kind of symbolic of it being over. And on top of that, that influx of AI-generated art and just sticking it on a mug or whatever, it's starting to upset some of the older Etsy sellers. Because they see AI as a cheap gimmick compared to the hard work, like the handcrafted stuff they've been selling for years. And it's interesting because even though they are questioning the kind of creativity that comes from this AI-generated stuff, Etsy's official stance is that it's allowed. Because because AI-generated digital products do require some creativity. You still have to prompt it. You still have to think about what you're creating. All right, it's time for a ChatGPT portfolio update. Now, TLDR is on a previous video, I invested $3,000 into an automatic trading portfolio, and it uses ChatGPT to go out and measure the sentiment from large cap stocks and pick whatever it thinks has the best score each day. And my update is fairly positive at this point, $3,107. Also, as a correction on that video, the next day when I pulled this thing up, it said 3,800 and something dollars. So I was like, wow, one night, huge gains. But the next day it dropped all the way back to of around $3,000, so I think that was like an error. I don't think that was really real gains. Also, every single month, the automatic trading system takes $10 out as the fee for doing the automatic trading. So you also have to minus out $30 from that. And I don't know if that's better than a broad index fund right now, but it's something and it seems to be working well. Look with your special eyes. Smash that subscribe button. Google Cloud has now introduced a new tool using machine learning to help with money laundering detection. Finding patterns in the like trillions, maybe hundreds of billions, of transactions that happen every single day is something machine learning artificial intelligence is particularly useful for. And it's hard for me to imagine any kind of a world where there's actually privacy in the transactions that you make in like five or 10 years. I just don't see how that's gonna happen. Maybe some kind of crypto, zero knowledge proof, off chain thing, but it's gonna be difficult. And for most of us that just use like regular bank accounts and credit cards, they're just gonna have systems that know who we are through KYC and they're gonna know when we transact, how much we came and where it's going and whether we have patterns that relate to good or bad behavior according to tax codes and laws. And I kid you not, the systems will get so good, like AlphaFold, like AlphaGo level, that they're probably gonna predict pre-crime and it's gonna be just like Minority Report. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks. I mean, maybe it'll be against the law to use it that way, but I think the technology will be available. So if you're money laundering, start cleaning up your act now. Why don't you start an AI company? Probably be a better way to get rich. Speaking of getting rich on AI, did you know that a lot of top AI researchers are making more than NFL players?
years, that's how sought after they are in this market right now. Ignacio de Gregorio wrote this article about an AI company that's valued at over $260 million and it's only four weeks old. So at the top of the article, he makes the point before you read it, click this link. This is the official website of the company where all that money went. And it's just a recruiting tool. But it begs the mystery, like how did this company get their hands on $113 million? And part of it's just that the logistics around this kind of thing is super weird. Like you need to have hundreds of millions of dollars to train these big AI models to do awesome generative things. So a lot of that money just goes right into hardware. Second, there's just not that many people with the skill set, and they're getting picked up by DeepMind and OpenAI who have huge pocketbooks. And third, these guys had a couple of those people on their team. So when they went to investors, they're like, look, man, we got these really smart geniuses. You just give us the money so we can like train the model and do something big. People were like, yeah, that's a good investment. All right, talking stocks for a minute. Have you seen Microsoft? It is blowing up. The stock for Microsoft has just reached a record high, which is incredible. It's already a, I think, dual trillion dollar company. And it's because they said that they expect over $10 billion in profits from their AI division. That's annual income. It was supported by JP Morgan's report and it's just got the industry excited. I mean, obviously I caught the bug too, but I feel like I'm too in the weeds to like make a good decision on this, but it does seem like large language models can be this interface, this new way for us to talk to everything. And the fact that they already threw it into Windows 11 and like every product that Microsoft makes already does seem seem bullish, I guess. And by all accounts, that's the closest you can be to investing in open AI, which is obviously changing the world. And Microsoft's financial chief, Amy Hood, anticipates fiscal fourth quarter growth for the Azure cloud, the big supercomputer that runs all sorts of stuff, but the AI models especially, to be up 26%. She suggests that it will become the fastest growing $10 billion business in history. If you've ever been interested in asking ChatGPT, I have $100, turn it into a thousand or more. <laughs> you know what? I'll just walk you through what happens. The advice that it gives is questionable. Linda Carroll wrote an article that was titled, ChatGPT told some guy exactly how much money to make, but it made one big mistake. And its advice started by getting a domain for $15 and then invest the remaining $85 in populating and designing the website. The main plan, ChatGPT said, was to go to social media, garner a bunch of attention, drive it to the website, and then sell that merch and get the affiliate links. And it helped write content that should be like SEO optimized, maybe it'll start coming up in Google searches. And it even recommended specific products, which was promising. However, in this case, even though things seemed well, eventually he just lost momentum, which seems really common. Like on a side hustle, you set up a store, you like want to sell these things, you try to drive traffic, but you're not making enough profit. And then it just wears you down and you give up after a while. Now you can read the full post to get more about her breakdown, but summarizing it would be like saying that it just over anticipated how much money you can make very quickly. It didn't explain just how much work something like this is going to be in the long run and how much you have to invest in it of your personal time and thought. So there was another big financial story which is that NVIDIA is now in the trillion dollar club. That's right, it's the first trillion dollar chip making company. So that's incredible, that's hardware. Now the milestone came from just soaring demand for these chips and we know how expensive all these AI models are. Also I think crypto, like mining uses all their stuff and gamers still use all their stuff. So NVIDIA just like, they're just firing on all cylinders. Also, as somebody who covers like the latest in research, their R&D department is dude, like top notch. Like that is Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, DeepMind, level research. And for what it's worth, a couple months ago when I asked you guys to vote on which stock you think will perform the best in the next five years, you picked Nvidia. So you were right on the money with that. Wisdom of the crowd might really work because the second choice you guys made was Microsoft and they also hit an all time high this week. I mean, it's not five years, but you deserve to take a bow. <laughs> Guy's got no love for Meta, huh? It's just all that open source they're doing. But even big companies like Bank of America who analyze this stuff professionally, they put a lot of time into these reports. They say it's a buy, so they're still buying it. Mostly based on the long-term earning potential. Let's talk about an industry called reg tech. So this is regulation technology. And the question is, can reg tech tame the 300 million pages of regulation? And I didn't really believe that. Like I knew the tax code and stuff was big and probably each regulatory body had a big book of something, but did anybody anticipate that there's 300 million pages of regulation around the financial sector as a whole? I didn't, but that does seem kind of like a business opportunity when you think about where artificial intelligence is going. I mean, large language models and summarization is like the bread and butter of what's happening right now. And it's weird, it's kind of overlooked because I always think about FinTech and like sort of crypto and AI and how that would all come together. But man, I think regulation is where there's a big opportunity. The other thing about reg tech is that you can build software that's more about connections. Like sometimes you're a customer and you want to be regulated or you want 
want to do something the right way and it's just basically impossible to find out how to do it the right way. Or you're on the other side and you're the government and you're like, I want to give you a fine because I think you're doing something wrong, but like you have to ask like, what exactly did they do wrong and reference where it is so you have a legal case against them. So rough estimate, but it seems like what I could find, there's about 150 reg tech companies that are kind of like going at that space right now, which really isn't that much compared to that 300 million pages of regulation that need to be figured out. And if you think about the companies and how much they could lose from doing something wrong, like with Binance or Coinbase, like imagine what they would pay for reg tech that could help like lock in exactly what they should be doing and protect them. So I would expect more investment money in startups to enter that space soon. So since ChatGPT really brought large language models to the mainstream, have you wondered how has that affected the financial industry? So let's talk about high frequency trading for a minute. So you would use machine learning, you could even call it AI, and what it was doing for a lot of the HFT companies was trying to figure out how to eke in a trade using data instantly before the next guy and taking that little bit of delta, you know? So if you read books like The Flash Boys that talk about how big companies will buy really expensive real estate in New York just to be like that much closer to a data center or they run fiber optic lines across the ocean, that game is all about making a decision and having it execute quicker than anybody else in the world. And of course that can make more money if you beat the other guy, but that can also sometimes go rogue and like swing the market one direction kind of out of control. Especially when a lot of different firms are running these kind of algorithms and there's no true understanding of the ensemble of like how they all come together, what the result will be, right? And the rise of these LLMs like ChatGPT means that now you can speak what you want into a system and it can be translated into the code and then executed. So there's this new wave of companies taking verbal streams of data like Twitter and whatnot, summarizing that, getting sentiment and instantly turning that into the high frequency trade. So here's my question to you. Will capitalism survive? Like is capitalism over or is it gonna be fine in the world of super intelligence? So a writer who goes by the pseudonym Liquid Ocelot or just has an awesome name, wrote a piece called OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman believes that AI will break capitalism. Now the comment was made during an interview with Forbes where he was talking about the power of chat GPT. In the same interview, he describes capitalism as being the least bad system around and he shows praise to capitalism as a whole. He points out that the advent of artificial intelligence might just undermine capitalism, the whole thing, the whole economic structure. What might replace it could be invented by the same artificial intelligence. And that might be something that we've never seen before, but is exactly what we've always needed. Something better than capitalism, like something that's more efficient, it's got some kind of decentralized market mechanism. Maybe a lot of commerce can be done between people where the wealth is created directly without a third party intermediary. I mean, yeah, he's the guy that's at the top of the chain right now at artificial intelligence. So it's just interesting to hear when he says like, oh yeah, capitalism, it's got a shelf life. Smash that subscribe button.